Hi there, I've decided to make an instructional 101 type video about how to level a house. Now this house is over a hundred years old and leveling a house like this can run into the thousands of dollars but it's something in an economy like this that you might consider doing yourself. It's not rocket science, it just requires some common sense and a little know-how. This is something I've done several times and I decided, you know, I might as well just make a video and show some people how to do this because I've got on the internet and tried to learn and there's there are a few good videos out there but for the most part it's kinda hard to find a video on YouTube that really breaks it down uh, step by step and some do they do a great job I'm not gonna dog them but I decided I'll throw a video into the mix and so um, I'm right outside this is was originally you know it's a pier and beam house ideally you'd want to drill holes into the ground and install piers. The piers were made of bodark on this house and they've long since rotted out. Some of them are still here but for the most part they're gone. The last person who came in to level this house used cinder blocks and as you can see those cinder blocks sunk in the mud. You can see the, the mud line here. They just set them like this on the ground and all the way to the house basically push them into the dirt and so that tells me that the last person to level this house was an amateur because it only makes sense that something with a small end like a pin will go into the ground when you put weight on it what happens when an elephant stands on a nail it punches it into the ground so what I've done is put 16 inch by 16 inch pads that are four inches thick under these cinder blocks and like an elephant's foot it will stay on top of the ground now it will settle some there will always have to be leveling that has to be done periodically after rains but if we can keep a skirt on this house and keep the water and moisture out then it will stay pretty close to its original position and so I use 20 ton hydraulic jacks I don't use 3 ton, I don't use 10 ton, 12 ton, 2 ton. We're lifting a huge house here. This is not a doll house. This is serious business. And so we need serious lifting power. I just get these at Home Depot. Um, when you actually jack the, um, the, p the beams up, you want to put these quarter inch pieces of steel on top of the jack so that this top of the jack doesn't punch a hole in the in the beam or in the pier these will destroy the piers you've got to distribute that weight out so set this on top of it and then then lift so we need something between the concrete and the beams because they can serve as highways for termites and so what I use I just get cedar fence posts at Home Depot cut them up and the cedar you know um, termites don't like it so I put it between the beams and the cinder blocks in some places I'll actually put the metal I'll put the quarter inch steel between the concrete and the wood because the termites aren't going through that um, it's really important that the beams be made out of two by sixes and that they're two uh, two boards in width. What I do is I place several jacks. Here's here's one of the old boat arc posts, the piers. That's drilled into. That's far into the ground. It's still it's still really good. I'm using it. I just put some. I put two chunks of cedar fence post between it and the in the beams just for just to keep it level but that wasn't really necessary I could have put anything in there but it's always good to use something that termites won't eat and I use you can see I, I've got this board on the ground right here I had the jack on top of that I need to get that out of there because it will attract termites all the wood all the little blocks of wood that you leave under the house will attract termites so just don't do that if you want to um, this is something else you can use as a shim. This is a shingle and it can go into a tight spot but don't leave them laying around. Stick them up on top of the beams if nothing else because they will draw termites otherwise. 
and there's another boat arc post that was still usable so I put a piece of steel between it and the beam I'm trying to think of other things to say because I don't want this video to drag on too long with, without saying anything I know it's something that people are going to watch because they need to actually do this stuff I would use gloves when you're working with those big blocks because you can hurt your fingers and rub the skin off or pinch them. This is something that you may not think you can do, but you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't think you might be able to. And so I just want to encourage you to go ahead and give it a try. And what you need to do though, you can't lift too much in one place. When you put a jack like that, you know, under the beam, you can only go up so high before you'll break the beam. You've got to use several of them. You see, I've got one there and one there, and I lift it up a little bit just to change out that cedar, uh, that piece of cedar on top of the block. I did have one of these pieces of steel under there and I just switched it out. I didn't lift it up much, but if I was going to lift it up much more than that, I would go along, and that's what I originally did, I went along the whole beam. I put jacks next to, e at least one jack next to each set of blocks that are holding up the beam, and I lifted it all up together. I lifted up one a little bit, went down the way, lifted up more, you know, lifted up with the next one a little bit, a little bit with the next one, with the next one, the next one, and then go back and start over. You don't want to lift up too much in one place or you will break the beam. And so then you've got a big problem. You've got to replace that, which is more trouble than it's worth. So just don't try to do too much at one time. Um, or don't try to lift the beam too high at one time. But don't be hesitant to go along the entire beam to lift it all up a little bit at a time. So these beams, they run throughout the... Beams like this run, you know, there's one every so so many feet throughout the, the entire house, you know, all the way across the bottom of the entire house. So this, even though we're outside, you're seeing exactly what you're going to do under the house with the next beam, eight, eight or ten feet over. There's another one just like it. And so, um, <clears throat> that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to post it, post them, and I'll see if I can answer them. I'm sure I can if I just get, get the time to check the post. Alright, well hopefully that'll help you out. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.